when i had started my career i felt pressure gauges are so simple what is it in a pressure gauge and i was feeling that i should start with something some complex instrument i felt that what is the need to start with standards for pressure gauges is there really a need for standards for pressure gauges but i was wrong when i started with the pressure gauge data sheet i realized that oh my god a pressure gauge is not that simple as it looks like this made me realize that we need standards for pressure gauges why because when i started with pressure gauges i was scared i realized that there are so many parameters in a pressure gauge that we need to look into from one side came snubber attacking me from the other side came when to use a siphon pigtail siphon and uh, so many different types of siphon which are available in the market then something called a schooling element which is different from a siphon then something came called as gate saver so when should you use a gate saver when should you not use a gate saver that came to be a issue to be dealt with then i realized was when to use solid front in a pressure gauge what is a solid front in a pressure gauge so many concerns came into picture then i got to know about diaphragm seals when to use a diaphragm seals which type of diaphragm seal to be used what is a flushing ring flushing flange and then came the blowout where should be the blowout should it be the back how should it work all these details came into picture and that is when i realized that there are a lot of parameters in pressure gauge that we need to look into and for that we need standards to standardize all of these things and also to be aware what to look in a pressure gauge data sheet this led to the understanding of standards and i realized there are two prominent standards that are uh, available for pressure gauges there would be more but as as we say the 80 20 rule majority of the projects and the literatures that i have gone through for pressure gauges usually incorporate these two standards the first one being asme b40 and the second one is en837 standard so let's look into both of these standards now we'll deal with asme b40 this is a standard which is even more used as compared to the en standard which is en837 this standard is almost found in 80% of the literature and client design basis that the client want to adhere to so for asme b40 we'll divide it into the various parts that the standard deals with so asme b40.1 deals with the pressure gauge parameters itself so it deals with that the dial what is the dial size what is going to be the uh, range of the pressure gauges what type of pressure gauges are available how the bottom tube linkage would be there etc so it deals with any parameter that is within the pressure gauge itself that is to be specified in the data sheet or for the manufacturer accuracy for example etc now let's look into the second part of it which is asme b40.2 now this specifically deals with diaphragm seals why because diaphragm seals are very important and they are usually used for such services which are either corrosive toxic clogging etc so special care has to be taken when to use diaphragm seal which type of diaphragm seal to be used the standard also gives recommendations on which service what has to be used etc now the third one which is asme b40 0.5 this one deals with the snubber in pressure gauges yes this is very important you might think that a snubber is a very small device which is to be used but a snubber can protect a pressure gauge in the long run a lot of pressure gauge failure is attributed because a proper snubber was not installed as a rule of thumb a snubber is usually used when the discharge usually in discharge of pumps etc where there is high pulsation but snubber itself has various types so this standard covers all the types which type of snubber to be used when to be used etc now the next one which we'll be looking into is called as gate saver also referred here as pressure limiting valve which is asme b40.6 this specifically deals with protecting the pressure gauge in high pressure applications so for example let's take that you have a pressure gauge which has a maximum pressure of 50 psig but the design pressure is 150 psig or 500 psig so in such cases you can't design the pressure gauge to withstand 500 psig for such cases you would use a gate saver where if the pressure goes beyond a certain limit maybe 80 psig the gate saver would get activated and all the pressure would be released 
away from the pressure gauge and not then not to the pressure gauge. So the pressure gauge basically is not exposed to such high pressures. Finally, as we see, everything is getting modernized. Even the pressure gauges are trying to get digital in nature. So ASME B40.7 deals with the pressure gauge, which are indicating the pressure in the digital scale. Now, let's look into the final standard, which we'll look into, which is EN837. This is also an amazing standard. And I personally find the standard very valuable. First, it has only three simple parts. The first part deals with the pressure gauge, which is Borden tube pressure gauges. So these usually are preferred for medium to high pressure applications and are one of the most widely used standards. The next one, which is part two, deals with it's a simple logical pattern. So the next one would deal with what the installation and selection. So basically, what do you select? Which type of pressure gauge would you select? Now here, yes, for very low pressure applications, you might have to go for a diaphragm seal or a capsule type pressure gauge and maybe for medium high pressure, you go to Borden tube. So here a proper table is set up for which pressure, what is recommended, which type of pressure gauge is recommended and how do you install that pressure gauge? What are different types of installations available for a pressure gauge? Is it mounted on a panel? Is it mounted on a T? How is it mounted? How do you want the dial size to be there? How should it be visible, etc.? So all of these things can be covered in part two. Now the part three deals with the special type of pressure gauges that we had discussed. So here we'll be having the diaphragm and capsule type pressure gauges. Here the diaphragm doesn't mean the diaphragm seal. It means the pressure sensing element within the pressure gauge. So the diaphragm of capsule type pressure gauges are generally used for cases where the pressure is low. For low pressure applications, we usually go for diaphragm or capsule type pressure gauges. Hope you found this video valuable.